In this session of Weaving Basics, we will learn how to wind a bobbin for cotton and for linen. In my hand here, I have two bobbins. This is the way bobbins are often wound. They're often wound overwound with more bulk to them and they're very squishy. This is not a successful bobbin to weave with. It will catch when you weave because the thread will catch within the bobbin. What you want to have is a bobbin that is wound like this which is very firm, very tight and when you pull the thread it doesn't catch into itself at all and will unwind from the bobbin perfectly in your shuttle. Before we start to wind a bobbin, the first thing we have to do is to make sure that our equipment is in good shape. Very often bobbin winders need oil. They are wheels and gears and they need to have oil. So use your sewing machine oil or some other light household oil and oil your bobbin winder. In this case I have an open bobbin winder. I oil it just a little bit where the gears are. Uh, you may need to oil yours in different spots. But after I've done that, of course, what you want to do is just make sure that you take off the excess oil, work it into the bobbin winder, and now your bobbin winder should run quite freely. This is a standard bobbin. It's got flanges on the end. And what we want to do with cotton is wind this bobbin so that it's nice and tight, very firm. Cotton has a little bit of elasticity in it. So therefore what we're going to do is we're going to wind up the ends of the bobbin first, build them up a little bit on both sides, and then after that we're going to wind the middle part. Let me show you what I mean. Put your bobbin on the bobbin winder and pull up your thread. When you wind a bobbin you want to secure this thread somehow. Sometimes people do it by winding around. I find that that's very awkward. I have a hard time starting it that way. What I do is I tie a little half knot, not a full knot, but a half knot, so that when I get to the end of my bobbin it will come off freely in the shuttle. I'm also going to try to leave a little bit of an end, but not too much. When I wind my bobbin, I always make sure that I wind over the top as opposed to underneath. This way I have much more control of my bobbin because I'm going to run my thumb right along the edge of where this bobbin is being wound. Because this is cotton, I'm going to wind out to this end, and you can see I'm building up that end a little bit. And then I'm going to wind over here, I'm going to build that end up a little bit. I'm going to go back over, I'm going to wind up and build this end up a little bit. Back over to the other side, build up this end a little bit. I am now finished winding the flange ends of the bobbin. I now need to fill in the middle. One of the things I have to be careful of is I don't want to come back out to the ed edges again because I want to unwind my bobbin from the center so it always feels feeds straight into the shuttle. The other thing is I do not want to overwind my bobbin like this. You can see that goes over the flanges. That will catch in my shuttle every single time. So here I go. I'm now going to wind it in. I will never again wind all the way out to the end because I've already done that part. You can see that my thumb is very close to my winding area. That is because I can control it. It is very much like winding a sewing machine bobbin. Wind back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. You can build up a little bit at a time. And you can see I never go back out all the way. I'm now almost finished winding my bobbin. I am well below the level of where my flanges are. And this is about as much as I would wind my bobbin. I'm ready to take it off. Snip. And you can see that the bobbin is very, very firmly wound. There's no squishiness. It's below the surface of the flanges, well, a little bit above there, but this is a good amount of yarn to put on your bobbin. And when I actually put this into my shuttle, it will feed straight off the center and not catch in my shuttle at all. The second bobbin I'm going to show you is a linen bobbin. Linen has no stretch at all in it, so it's very important to wind a very solid bobbin for your linen yarn. 
The other thing is that in the cotton bobbin, we actually wound up the ends by the flanges first and then filled in the center. In the linen one, you do not want to do that. In the linen one, you want to go straight across slowly all the way and then come straight back across all the way. So quite a different way than it is that you wound the cotton bobbin. Cotton spools will fit on a cone rack very easily. Their bobbin is large enough to fit on and so that's an easy way to control it. But sometimes with linen cones, it's not so easy to fit them on. Um, so therefore we can use another method, which would be a little plastic container that we can put the linen in. So this particular one is very handy because it's got little holes in the top. So I can run my linen yarn through there, <clears throat> like so. Close up my little container. And then my linen will feed straight through uh, the little hole in the top and feed onto the bobbin in a straight manner. Again, you're going to use your little half knot here. And again, make sure that you're winding over the top. Fingers really close to the bobbin this time because again, linen has no stretch at all. So you want to make sure that your bobbin is really, really solidly wound very firm all the way out to the end and now I'm going to work my way slightly across you can see that I'm not winding out to the other edge at this point I'm just going from side to side because linen you don't want it to collapse on itself it would if it were to collapse down off the ends close to the flanges it would catch on itself and we don't want that to happen so we're just going to wind straight across you can also see I'm winding the linen a little bit slower than I wound the cotton and I'm putting a fair bit of tension on my thumb as I'm actually winding it here. So there's no building up of the edges, it's straight across the whole time, building from side to side and I'm almost finished here. And I think that is about as much linen as I would like to put on my bobbin. You can again see that it's well below the flanges there, so there's no build up, there's no way it'll catch in my shuttle um, and cause an edge problem for my weaving. And there is my linen bobbin. Again, you can see it'll feed off the bottom in the shuttle very straight, very easily, very tightly wound. I cannot push on either of these bobbins very much at all compared to this one. The last bobbin we're going to wind is another cotton bobbin that's going to be wound on the electric bobbin winder. Uh, my cotton is positioned on my rack down here and will wind straight up. The electric bobbin winder of course is a much much faster winder to wind on um, and again winds very firm bobbins. I would not use it for linen because for the linen I need the control so that I can really make sure my bobbin is wound very evenly. But for cotton it's a wonderful winder to have. Again a little half knot so it's easy to pull off. I'm going to step on my pedal. This is a variable speed bobbin winder so you can see it goes fast or slow. You don't want to go too fast on the electric bobbin winder and again you want to have your finger fairly close to the bobbin but not as close as we had it on the hand bobbin winder. I'm going to go out, I'm going to build up my edges a little bit, over to the other side, build up my edge just a little bit, back over to the other side, build up my edge just a little bit and now I'm going to wind just back and forth. Quick and easy.